welcome back. So it's Rose Wick from Briggs Road Elementary. Today we're going to be exploring how to create a monochromatic landscape. We'll talk about what that word monochromatic means, how to use our color pencil. We'll even have a little fact check with the help of my daughter Stella. Let me show you my example so you can kind of get a concept of what we're doing and I can't wait to get started. So today we're going to be talking about monochromatic landscape drawings. What does monochromatic mean? Well, if an image um, contains only one color but different tints and shades of the color, then the image is considered a monochromatic image. So you're thinking lights and darks all within one image, but it's the exact same hue. So let's talk about how do you get a tint or shade of a color. Um, to get a tint, you're lightening the color. So you add white to the color and it makes it lighter. To get a shade, you're going to add black, which will make it darker. So tints and shades affect how light or dark a color is. What we're going to need for this landscape drawing, what you're going to include in it, is multiple layers of mountains, one or more layers of a tree or house in the foreground. You may only use one color. You may add pressure to get darker in your foreground. That's going to be your darkest place because it's closest to you. Add, add a layer, a layer of black, black underneath and it'll help it make it darker as it comes closer. For supplies today, you'll need a half a sheet of paper, a drawing pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, and one colored pencil. You can choose any color you want. I would suggest go with a little bit of a darker hue. Um, yellows are a little hard to do on this, so I chose a blue. Okay, to set up the landscape, we're going to draw three rows of mountains. Um, I'm going to start by kind of wiggling my pencil and getting that kind of nice organic shape for my mountains. Remember, we're going to always draw light till we get it right, and in this case, we're going to want to vary the shape of the mountain ranges as you're drawing, and you might want to make them get smaller or taller, just a variety until you get there. Then you have a choice in the foreground of your picture, which is at the bottom, closest to you. You could do something like a house or a tree or several buildings. I'm going to do a tree. I'm going to do a rather tall tree, and you're going to see as I'm drawing my tree that my tree will begin to overlap my mountains. Now, I drew light so I can go back and erase those mountain lines in between because we know that you couldn't see through my tree. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm, before I start to add any color at all and I'm going to erase the mountain lines because you wouldn't be able to see through my tree. And remember that concept of overlapping kind of helps create a sense of depth on a flat picture plane. And so now I have a large tree in my foreground and I have mountain ranges that go back in space and create a sense of depth. Okay, so we are going to begin to add our tints and shades to colors. And since we're only using one color pencil, I have to explain how we're going to do that. If this was a painting lesson, we know, um, just as we talked about earlier, that to get a tint of a color, we would have to add white to lighten it up, and to get a shade, we would add black to give it a, a darker value. Now, we're just gonna use one color pencil. So we're gonna have to apply pressure a certain way. And in order, what we're gonna do is we want the background closest to the sky to be our lightest, and as things get progressively closer to the foreground, they're gonna get darker. So I'm going to turn my paper sideways because it's just easier for me to color like that. And I'm going to show you that when we're coloring um, with color pencil, if you walk your hand all the way to the back to the back of the pencil when you're starting and you want your lightest tint, you can't apply as much pressure. So it'll make it much lighter. So let's try that. And remember, we always try and color in one direction. Two things happen when you color in one direction. Um, first of all, it goes a little faster, but second of all, it gives you this kind of nice, flatter, more complete looking color, better craftsmanship. And I am filling in my sky with these nice gentle strokes and giving me a light area of color. All right, I'm gonna move on to my first mountain so you can kind of see. So 
I'm going to lightly go over my pencil line with the blue so I kind of have more definition of that mountain. And this time I'm going to walk my hand down just a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more pressure as I'm coloring in my mountain. And you almost immediately can see that the mountain is a darker shade of blue than the tint of that sky. So this also helps create that sense of depth as things are getting darker as they're getting closer to you. I'm going to outline the next set of mountains brushing down just a little bit more. And I am going to color in one direction. And again, I'm pressing down just a little bit more. Now, not only can you press down a little bit harder as you're coloring, the other factor that comes into play is you can layer your color. So as you're trying to get those darker shades of a color, you can go back and add a second layer of your color pencil and it'll also create a little bit of a darker color. All right, I'm going to um, go ahead and finish mine up showing you the darkest one and then I'll come back and actually finish the picture off camera. So you can start to begin to see how the colors get progressively darker as it gets closer. You may notice that these two colors are really close in value. So what I was saying is that you can go in here and you can apply more pressure but you also can overlap your color. Now the one other thing that I did not tell you in the beginning is that you're also going to need a black color pencil. For um, creating the last shade of the color, the thing that's closest to you in the foreground, in this case it's my tree, we actually put a layer of black underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and use my black. And I'm going to do a nice light layer. of black underneath my tree. So that this can be my darkest value. This will be the darkest shade of blue that I'll be using because I have that foundation of black underneath. And you'll notice that I'm going really light with my black. I can always come back and add in more black if I feel like my my, the shade of color needs to be a little bit darker. So once I have the black down, I'm simply going to take my blue and I'm going to layer it over the black. The colors will blend as I'm layering it and it creates this instant darker value. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine up and I'll show you the finished product in just a moment. Hi, so you can kind of see how um, the sky goes from a light tint of blue and into a much, much darker shade as we get to our tree where I have the layer of black underneath. Monochromatic, again, means just one color, but you're changing the tint or the shade, so the value is changing. Um, play around with your color pencils, try and create your own monochromatic landscape, and enjoy. Quick fact check with so Stella. I have my daughter Stella helping me. She is a fourth grader, so this is actually one of her lessons that she's going to be doing. Um, Stella, can you tell me how you mix a tint of a color? Um, you get white to make you use white to make it lighter. Okay, and what about if we wanted to change the shade of a color? You use black to make it darker. Make it darker. So since we're not using paint, how are we going to make the color darker? Um, by when you press the pressure, if you like, if you hold your pencil back farther and barely press it down, you get a lighter, and if you hold it down more when you're coloring, you get a darker. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to let you work on your drawing. I'm going to work on mine, and then we'll show the. Image. Sounds like Stella mastered the process. Let's see her masterpiece. Fantastic.